I asked him where he was. <coughs> Brent always told me where he was. He was at his friend Erica's, and he was, he sounded sleepy, but I mean, I never thought any more into that, you know, because I knew he had great drinking, and it was late, and I said, I can't come over and pick you up, I said, because we the brakes went on the car. And, oh my goodness, he said, how am I going to get to school in the morning? It was his biggest worry. <coughs> you know, he was starting a brand new semester, he ended up the previous semester with an 85 average, and he said, well, I've got to get to school, I've got to get to school. And he was having a connection bet, and I said, well, I said, Grampy will pick you up, I said, I have to be to work for 8 o'clock in the morning, Grampy will pick you up after he drops me off from work on the way. He said, oh, okay, because that would give him two hours to get ready and a half an hour to get to school. <coughs> And he was fine with that. So I said, all right, Brandon, I said, good night. I said, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. And that was my last conversation that I had with him. <laughs> the boy showed up at my place the next morning, 20 after 7. And uh, they want to know, like, it's a security building, so they want to know if I let them up. And, uh, I was getting ready for work, and I said, who was that? And I said, it's the police. He goes, police? And I'm like, yeah. So, you know, we thought, you know, typical 19-year-old teenager, he probably get himself into a little bit of trouble, nothing major. So anyway, uh, I let them up, and um, they told me to sit on the couch. And then they told me, Brandon, had died at the Social Regional Hospital at 7 o'clock in the morning. Apparently, how it went, he had taken <laughs> prescription drugs the night before, and he went to sleep, and like Amy's brother, he didn't wake up. <coughs> they called 911 at 6 o'clock in the morning, and he was taken to the hospital, and he had a slight pulse, and they worked on it for an hour, and they couldn't bring him back. My reason for being here today is just to let everybody know that this whole thing about prescription drugs is not just a problem in the Annapolis Valley, it's not a problem on the South Shore, it's province wide, it's country wide. And we have to look after this problem now so these young people stop dying of senseless death. That has to be looked after now. Brandon did not commit suicide. He had plans that morning, he had plans for that month, and he had plans for that summer. <laughs> so it was an accident. Thank you. Thank you.